Sunday of football on Fox for you as the Vikings take the field. We're in the dome. Go ahead, lay on the couch today. You deserve it. You had a big Saturday night. And now welcome to the broadcast booth, everybody. <laughs> I am Joe Buck. Giggling Troy Aikman to my left is coming up. So is Pam Oliver. Well, here it is. There they are, the fireworks, and it's Brett Favre against his former team, the Green Bay Packers, but that storyline is old. The bottom line is for the Vikings, they need a win here today to have any hope the rest of the season. And for the Green Bay Packers, they need a win to keep pace with the Chicago Bears in the NFC North. And now he stopped <laughs> giggling, so I'll ask you, is this really the Vikings team that we watched in the NFC Championship not that long ago, one play away? Well, they, hey, they, this is a team that has been trying to find a game that they can get their season turned around on, and they thought it happened two weeks ago against Arizona. They didn't show up last week against Chicago. I know Joe, in talking with Brett Favre, he felt it was the best week of practice that they have had this week. He felt it's the best he's thrown the ball in five years. They've got Sidney Rice back. What does all that mean? Who knows? I'm not sure they even know. But the one thing that I know is that they have got to be able to get pressure on Aaron Rodgers. That front four defensively has got to be better than they've been all year. One thing I know is one of the huge stars in this league, a young guy, Clay Matthews, linebacker for the Packers, and he's standing by with Pam. Well, Clay, Brett Favre, he's got a pension for turnovers. How do you try to lure him into making even more mistakes today? we got to stop the run first. Uh, Peterson had his way with us last time, shut that down, force him into some turnovers. We feel comfortable with our guys in the back and our guys getting pressure on him, so expect the same. You are the NFL sack god. How are you able to create all of those opportunities for yourself? You got a great defensive coordinator and Dom Capers moving me around. A, a great cast and crew around me who helped me out. So uh, really it's all them and a little bit of hard work on my part. Appreciate it. Thank thanks, you. Man. Joe, back to you. All right, Pam, and thanks to Clay for stopping by. This is the 100th meeting between the Vikings and the Packers. Take a break and come back and play football. Back after this from the Verizon NFL Mobile Update. Watching Fox Sports in HD. Presented by DirecTV. Fox Sports welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. Nothing but noise in this dome. It is going to be loud. Starting points is this the last gasp for the Vikings three and six seven to go after this one they get Sidney Rice back and for the Green Bay Packers are they in the category of rested ready to roll or are they rusty after the bye they went into their bye with three straight wins Percy Harvin is deep Crosby kicks it away. From about the two, the electrifying Harvin had a chance, and Atari Bigby may have saved a big return. 25 yarder as it is, and Bigby saved a good start for the Vikings. Here comes Brett Favre, who makes his 295th consecutive regular season start. That streak started in 1992, and here's Sidney Rice. Coming in late, the crowd appreciates that he's on the field. Had hip surgery in August. First game back. It's Anthony. Adrian Peterson rather on the right side, and Adrian, no game. Adrian comes in number two in the NFL behind Arian Foster with 908 rushing yards and he went nowhere on that initial carry and here are the backs and receivers for the Vikings and that's a big weapon Troy to have Sidney Rice back in there a guy who had 1300 yards receiving last year now the big question for Minnesota is how long is he going to be able to play nice to have him on the field but as we know this is his first action since going back to last year's NFC championship game second down and ten. Fake a quick throw far down the middle and it's not there. Shanko is overthrown. So Favre has to peel himself off the turf and it's third and ten right out of the gate for the Vikings. Well Green Bay already here on the first two plays stacking the line of scrimmage do a nice job on the first down against Adrian Peterson and then get pressure. 
right into the face of Brett Favre last week in Minnesota's game against Chicago I thought the offensive line for Minnesota got absolutely manhandled in that game Brett Favre was having to move constantly in order to get passes off and some of which led to the interceptions that he threw in that game he threw three turned it over four times it's third and ten and load holds a right tackle move. All start offense number 71 five yard penalty still third down it's Cleet Blakeman who is our referee today and so this has been a poor start offensively they had a chance for a big return Bigby saved that for Green Bay and now it's third down and 15. Well and this was a problem last week you know, they couldn't convert on third down but a big reason for that was because almost all of their third downs were third and eight or more. And here they are at third and 15 on their first one today. One for nine a week ago at Chicago. Favre's in trouble. Bad foot and all is now going to slide. And it's three and out for Minnesota to start the day. Clay Matthews with the pressure and Favre went down a loss of one. Well just a little bit of a stunt. They put Chiller on the outside along with Matthews. Matthews rushes from the inside. Lodeholt is unable to just collapse him down and because of the pressure it got Favre then out on the edge and Green Bay was in man coverage but as we know Favre with a hobbled ankle isn't going to get very far. They are crediting Clay Matthews with a sack that gives him eleven and a half he leads the NFL. Here is a little reverse that shields on the reverse trying to use his speed and nothing doing. They wanted the sure hands of Tremont Williams catching the punt. And then they wanted the legs of Sam Shields but a loss of one on the return and here is Aaron Rodgers who gets Donald Driver back on the outside and the rookie Balaga starting at right tackle his sixth consecutive start. Well let's look back at the last time these two teams met and on the outside both Chad Clifton and Brian Balaga the rookie they did a great job without any help on the defensive end pass rush of the Vikings they're hoping to be able to continue with that here today. Here is Brandon Jackson right up the middle picks up four. We'll take a look at this defense which comes in seventh overall but the real eye popping numbers aren't there in a group that led the NFL in sacks a year ago tied for 25th with just 14 all year. Well to me it's real simple Joe. There's four guys along that defensive front and every now and then they'll rotate some guys in but Jared Allen and Ray Edwards along with Kevin Williams those guys have got to be factors in this game because for the most part this year they haven't even shown up. Second down and six. Blitz coming. Jackson right side dragged down by middle linebacker E.J. Henderson. A gain of just one third down coming up. You know going back to what I was saying a little bit earlier in the last meeting between these two teams Aaron Rodgers was not sacked in that game. He was afforded a lot of time to throw the ball and and yet in those games last year against Minnesota I mean he was a human pinata. He was sacked what 14 times I believe in those two games combined eight times when they met here in Minneapolis third and five. They're coming with pressure. The pass is low, and it's three and out for Green Bay. Corliss, the intended receiver. A blitz from Minnesota, and that forced the early throw. That's a great start there by the Vikings defensively, forcing the Packers into third down, and then getting the ball out of Aaron Rodgers' hands quickly by bringing pressure. Day hits it. It's a high hanging punt. And a fair catch called for by Camarillo. 48 yard punt. Vikings have it for the second time. No score. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at Southwest.com. So Brett Favre, who played for the Green Bay Packers from 1992 through 2007. Two and one against Green Bay. 
Ball with the Vikings as Peterson carries it for just one. Desmond Bishop, who's played really well in the middle, and Matthews in on the stop. Second and nine, and we look at this defense at 3 4. Pickett is back after missing time with a bad ankle. Well, and this defense knows they've got to do a better job against Adrian Peterson. The last time these two teams met, Adrian ran the ball very well. They were thin at that time along the defensive line. You mentioned Ryan Pickett. He went out early in that game. They've got a little more depth as they come into this game. It's ridiculous the number of injuries that the Green Bay Packers have had, have had to withstand. No jumping on second down. Hard count. There's one for Adrian. Bouncing it to the outside and a big run. The first big play of the day. It's AP. 24 yards. Well, they get a great push in the middle here with the center and then Anthony Herrera the right guard. And then you're going to see Tahi lead the way at fullback. That's a heck of a double team right there by those two offensive linemen and Adrian Peterson with his quickness. Once he gets into any kind of space, he's able to then bounce that back to the outside. So 24 yards and a first down for Minnesota at their own 4 3. Blitz coming, they fake the handoff. Favre's in trouble, slings it incomplete in the direction of Sidney Rice. Pressure by Colin Jenkins, who for the first time since week one is playing without a cast on his left hand. Yeah, in fact, Colin Jenkins, he'll tell you that he would have had more sacks if he wasn't wearing the, the club. And he was the one who got into the backfield and initially put the pressure on Favre along with B.J. Raji. Favre, who is playing with fractures in his left ankle and foot. Is faced with second and ten. Delayed handoff. Here he is again, and Adrian Peterson loses yardage. A.J. Hawk, the first one there, a loss of one. Well, with the exception of the the last run that Adrian Peterson had for 25 yards, I mean they have really done a nice job. They bottled him up, but that's the greatness of Adrian Peterson. You know, you hold him to no no gain, no gain, one yard. And then he busts one off for 20 plus yards. And there's no doubt that Brad Childress wants to continue to feed the ball to Adrian Peterson. Comes over and talks to Eric Bieniemy, his position coach. It's third and 11. Blitz again. Favre in trouble, floats it. Pass is caught by Gerhardt. First down, Minnesota. Favre hung in, made a play, a gain of 19. Well, they bring Charles Woodson off the slot. You can see him right here. And he comes untouched. They time it pretty well with the snap there. I think Favre sensed him coming. And knowing that he couldn't hold it to get the ball down the field to a receiver, comes underneath to Gerhardt in a good open field run right there in order to pick up that first down. Two big plays on this drive. Now here is Lewis hit in stride. Out of bounds at the 11 29 yards. Well that's that void in that two deep zone coverage. You get it in behind the corner and then in front of the safety. Sam Shields was the corner and then you've got to get Nick Collins over the top but there is a little bit of a window there and if you drive the ball the way Favre just did you've got a chance to get a completion just as they did against or two Greg Lewis. That's three big plays on this drive and it's first down at the 11. Adrian takes it inside the 10 and now still won't go down penalty flag on the far side of the field at the 11 and it's an illegal shift against the Vikings. It was a three yard run but here's the call. It was a three yard run but here's the call. <laughs> illegal shift offense there were two men in motion at the snap. Five yard penalty, replay first down. You know, Green Bay defensively, they they have been very good this season 
In fact, until the Bears played the Miami Dolphins on Thursday night, they were number one in scoring defense. Right now, they come into this game number two, but they give up yards, but they do a great job of keeping people out of the end zone. And the Vikings, much to their surprise, have stunk in the red zone. They're 26th in the NFL. And this is what they've done all year as they shut that play down. They had the illegal shift. Let's see if this one's against the Vikings. Neutral zone infraction. Defense. Number 58. Five yard penalty. Still first down. It's Zombo the rookie, and that gives the five yards right back. But the Vikings have been able to get in that zone, and then when you talk to Brad Childress, Daryl Bevel, even Favre, he said we'll make a killer penalty. It'll back us up. And we're looking at goal to go from outside the 20 sometimes and now they're first and 10 back the 11. So back where they started. Gerhardt in the backfield he gets it. And Toby the rookie out of Stanford picks up three. Halfway through the first quarter and when we talked to Brett Favre you mentioned it in the open Troy. He said I had a practice on Thursday where I threw the ball harder and better than I have in five years as far as his foot is concerned he said it's purple all week and then by the time Sunday rolls around it's normal color and then back to the week it's purple again. Well and him having the best day in five years throwing the ball came on the heels of Monday with him saying he was going to have to get a second opinion on that shoulder. <laughs> Peterson at the top of the screen Favre looks left the entire time and Lewis drops it. Tremont Williams was out there in coverage may not have been enough for a touchdown but now it's third and long coming up. Yeah no it doesn't get you into the end zone for a touchdown but but what it does is it gets you down in there inside the five yard line and around the two yard line where you have some options then here on third down as to whether or not you want to try to run the football or do some play action get far out on the edge. I mean a lot of plays then at offensive coordinator Darrell Bevels for him to call but now it's uh, now it's shotgun formation on third and seven low snap pump fake Favre Camarillo needs to do a lot and he can't well covered out there by Green Bay and Shields was out there with Woodson a gain of just two and Charles Woodson he's one of the best at forcing fumbles and you see one he got away with a Face mask Shields did, but Woodson immediately goes in for the ball. That's a great job by Camarillo. Getting both hands on it and not giving it up to Woodson. So a 24 yard try coming up from Longwell. It was 10 of 11 this season, longtime Green Bay Packer. And an easy chip shot for one of the best. Three big plays on the drive. Favre and company, they keep knocking on the door, but they can't get in. They settle for just three. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Bud Light. It's the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. Beijing Sam Shields, he gets his chance now. He returned to kick for 49 yards against Dallas before the bye week. He struggled. In the preseason, catching the football, he's worked hard on it. He's got great speed, 4-2-40 guy, and that's what they want to see. Green Bay is looking for a spark. It shields, and Longwell pops it up. That is taken in by John Kuhn. So they're trying to keep it away from Shields. It's an eight-yard return. Here comes Aaron Rodgers with a pack down by three. Fox, CBS, NBC, ESPN, Disney Channel. They show up to do a Vikings game. All eyes go to Brett Favre, who's taken some hits. And now Jared Allen wants some crowd noise to help him and the D line get some hits on Aaron Rodgers. Packers down by three. Here come the Vikings inside handoff Jackson. 
picks his way across the 30. Mark him outside the 31 again of four Jared Allen in on the tackle. You know one of the things that Green Bay wants to be able to do in this ball game is they want to get to their three wide packages. They were in a three wide set on that last snap. Antoine Winfield typically plays on the outside when they're in their base defense but against three wide receivers he'll then move to the slot. That's where the Packers want him and then it allows them one on one matchups that they really like on the outside. Look for that as we move through this game. Chad Greenway comes out of the lineup injured on the sideline. Heath Farwell comes in and here is Brandon Jackson who got to within a yard of the first down third and one when we come back here's Kurt with a game break. The Cowboys first possession against the Lions 13 plays 98 yards ends up in a Des Bryant one yard touchdown reception from John Kitten a little crawl afterwards with seven nothing Cowboys over the Lions. Joe Troy Pat. An absolute stud, Des Bryant. You know, he scored enough touchdowns this year as a rookie. I think he'd have a little bit better touchdown <laughs> celebration than that, wouldn't you? I would think. There's Greenway on the sideline, their leading tackler, third and one. Demetrius gets it, and he fights for a first down. Went right through the E.J. Henderson hit, picked up two and a first down. That's just good running it there by Dimitri Nance because you're right Joe E.J. Henderson was right in the hole and he made good contact with him as well. He was short of the first down at initial contact right there but he kept his legs going. It's a nice job picking up the first down. Dimitri Nance who's a rookie picked off the practice squad of Atlanta by Green Bay. And here's a sack and there's Ray Edwards. Twisting Aaron Rodgers to the turf and a loss of 10. Well, Ray Edwards gets the sack, but it's really Ben Lieber here who forces him to have to move to the outside. But because Ray Edwards maintains contain, he's then able to get the sack. Right now, what we've seen already early in this game, Leslie Frazier, the defensive coordinator, bringing pressure, not just relying on his front four, which in years past was enough. This year it has not been. He's bringing extra bodies to get pressure on Rodgers. Second down and 20 as the Vikings sack Aaron Rodgers for the first time this season. A stunt up front defensively. Here's Driver on the catch. And a small gain of seven as we are under three and a half to go in this opening quarter. Yeah, that time, Joe, they brought Antoine Winfield off the slot. And so Leslie Frazier has made it very clear here in the early going that he's not going to allow Aaron Rodgers to just sit back in the pocket and throw the football. He understands it's a mismatch on the outside if Aaron Rodgers has time. And it's it's a mismatch most weeks when Green Bay is playing or no matter who Green Bay is playing. It's third down and 13. Four man rush. Rodgers with time now time runs out. Buys more time and down he goes. Jared Allen. A loss of five. Well, Jared Allen, he can thank these guys on the back end because they did a good job of not giving Aaron Rodgers anywhere to go with the ball. He did have time. You called it, Joe. And he was moving around, sliding around, trying to trying to find somewhere to go with the football and it is hard on a defensive secondary to hold up in coverage for that long. Mastay gets it away Allen now with five and a half sacks over the last two plus games as Camarillo hauls it in a fair catch a punch of 37 yards. Here comes the Viking offense back to the field and number four as they lead by three. An injury up front for Minnesota. Ryan Cook takes over at right guard for Anthony Herrera. We'll get an update on Herrera's status in a moment. Vikings start at their 33. Quick setup. That initial throw wasn't there. Shenko. A gain of six and down to the field. Here's Pam Oliver. Well, Joe, the Vikings could be minus their emotional leader on the offensive line. You mentioned Anthony Herrera. He has a knee injury. It's to his left knee. His return is doubtful. Back to you. So it's Cook at right guard, and then John Sullivan is at center. 
He left the game last week in Chicago. He missed two games earlier with a left calf strain, but he's able to go today. Their only other backup offensive lineman is John Cooper. And they're not going to get a sympathy from the Packers. No. They've just ravaged by injury. Second and four. And it's an end around with Percy Harvin. Taking a big hit from Woodson. Charles Woodson made the tackle a gain of just one. Clay Matthews, you talked about him, Joe, in the year that he is having. No sophomore slump for him. This guy plays 100 miles an hour on every play. I mean, a great effort guy. And on the back end of that, you've got Charles Woodson. And I, I marvel at how physical he is, one, at this stage of his career, but also for a guy who is so good doing so many other things. I mean, he's got such great ball skills. We saw him earlier trying to get the strip fumble. But he is a complete player, even what is now his 13th season. It's third down and three. Blitz coming. Pass is caught. And the roll for the first down by Harvin. A gain of four. You watch Percy Harvin during the pregame, during the warmups, and you see his arms. I, I don't know if, if TV does him justice, but upper body, he's like a running back. He is put together. Well, and he's as tough as they come, too. And, and you're right, because because guys that typically are that fast and have that kind of quickness, you don't generally then think of them as being real physical, strong guys. But but he is, and and he takes a pretty pound each and every week. He's been the only thing that has really saved them offensively this year. Playing with a bad left ankle and has always dealt with migraines. Adrian Peterson picks up two. And that is the end of one. The whole team hoping for some life after today. The Vikings lead 3 0. Fox NFL Sunday will return after this from your local Fox station. Vikings trying to capitalize on the momentum their defense may have given them. So far, the Packers only eight yards, one first down. Points belong to the Vikings up three zip, second and eight. As we start the second quarter. And play action. Favre is hitting that one was almost picked by Hawk. There's Colin Jenkins again in the backfield third and eight. Boy, Colin Jenkins, yeah, they were expecting a pretty good game out of him here this afternoon, and he just splits a double team right between. The right guard there Ryan Cook who just came in off the bench as you stated and he got the pressure on far because they were wanting to get the ball down the field to Percy Harvin but he just didn't have time. You know you saw those stats there in the first quarter Joe almost 10 minutes of time of possession for the Vikings. That's what they wanted to do. They want to keep the Packers offense on the sidelines. Did a great job of it there in that first quarter. Time of possession for the season the Vikings are 17th in the NFL third and eight. First down Gerhard is stripped ball comes out and Hawk recovers for Green Bay who knocked it out Charles Woodson Woodson is incredible with his nose for the ball and he forced another fumble well and initially Brandon Chiller you're going to see him he goes with the pull in lineman here and then you've got Gerhardt who comes underneath it that was executed very well by the Vikings. But then as Woodson comes in Gearhart just doesn't secure the football and a great break for the Packers just as the Minnesota Vikings were driving. That is the 24th turnover for this Vikings offense. They are now minus 12 in the turnover ratio that is dead last in the NFL and that is killing this team. Quick set up and throw and it's batted away. Well you look at the Packers defense Joe last year they were first in the NFL in takeaways and they're they're in the top ten this year and it's not by accident you don't do that week after week year after year and you just see I mean as soon as the ball is in his area he goes after it and a lot of guys do but he has a knack for just knowing how to make contact with the ball. <laughs> And knock it loose. See Colin Jenkins bowing to him as he shook his head, <laughs> shook his hand, and uh, why not? A turnover machine. Second and ten. Rogers slings it. Donald Driver with a catch. Forced out by Chris Cook. 
And a gain of six. Well, and how about the Packers offensively? I mean, because they're getting so many opportunities with the takeaways by the defense, you get the shorter field, and they do something with it. You know, I mean, it's one thing to get a takeaway and then have a short field offensively, but the Packers lead the NFL scoring points off of off of defensive takeaways. Chad Greenway is back. He was poked in the eye. Now he's got a shield under his face mask. That's why he was on the sideline. It's third and four. Here come the Vikings. Quick throw, incomplete. Knocked away from James Jones by Chris Cook. The rookie made the last two plays. Well, Chris Cook has had to play more than what the Vikings would have liked here in his first season. That's pretty good coverage right there, and that's a great job defensively by Minnesota. You know, too many times I think defenses get off the hook after a turnover, and it's just assumed that it's okay then to give up points. They step up here, three and out. Mass day hits it. It's a knuckleball that sails out of bounds. Should be decent feet position for the Vikings. As the Minnesota sideline waits for the spot of the ball. In the end, just a 31 yard punt. Here's Brett, up three. Take a look at the Vikings leaders here as we are just starting basically the second quarter. 69 yards for Brett Favre. On first down, fake the handoff. Favre has to move, and that's Tahi, the fullback. And the Fahu has a first down. Woodson on the tackle. Charles all over the field, a gain of 11. Your guy, Nafahu Tahi, your favorite fullback across the NFL. Yeah, well, I, I had a chance to visit with offensive coordinator Daryl Bevel before the game, and I, I thought that this would be a good game to feature Nafahu Tahi, and apparently he agreed. Yeah, well. Plus, I just like saying Nafahu Tahi. There's Daryl Bevel, who a lot of people may not know, but he actually was a quarterback in Wisconsin when Brad Childress was the offensive coordinator, led the team to a Rose Bowl win over my alma mater, UCLA. On first down, here is Adrian. Gain of three. Zombo on the tackle. Here's more on Daryl Bevel. Four year starter at Wisconsin. That Rose Bowl win you talked about was 93. It was the offensive coach with the Green Bay Packers from 2000 through 2005. And he's been the offensive coordinator for head coach Brad Childress, who was with him, as Troy mentioned. At Wisconsin, and he is the reason Brett Favre is with the Vikings, not Brad Childress. On second down, here is Greg Lewis, who gets drilled by Tremont Williams. Wow. You know, you mentioned Daryl Bevel, and, and as we see the hit there. You know he is the reason that Brett Favre is here and Brett Favre said it is uh, you know when he was here last season that that that's why he came he knew the offense he knew the relationship with Bevel and what he would call and you know it's kind of put Daryl Bevel in somewhat of an awkward position I suppose because of his friendship and relationship with Brett Favre and then also you know the fact that his boss is Brad Childress so of course we've uh, we've all been following that relationship here over the last several weeks it's third down and seven. Blitz coming. Vikings pick it up. And a push off from Sidney Rice. No call, no completion. It's fourth down. Before the punt, here's a game break and Kurt Menefee. Well, no matter the value of that new contract, Donovan McNabb looking a lot better today than he did on Monday night, hooking up with Santana Moss for a five yard score and let the Redskins even the count with the Tennessee Titans as they near the end of the first quarter. Joe Gray and Pan. You know that gets a big whatever from me. <laughs> Fantasy football owners who have Santana Moss are all commiserating with me watching that highlight. Seven seven game there. Here it's three nothing as Cluey hits it. Tremont Williams hauls it in. Green Bay Packer offense has done sip. Back to the field they go with Aaron Rodgers down by three. 
Today's game is sponsored by the Miller Lite Aluminum Pipe. Four more ounces of that great Pilsner taste. By Citizen Echo Drive. Fueled by light, it never needs a battery. Unstoppable. And by the Ford F-150 and its four new engines. This is the future of truck. Why don't we give you the Green Bay Packers offensive leaders? Aaron Rodgers has 13 more yards than Don Mikowski today. Brandon Jackson with 14 yards and driver two catches 13 yards. In other words the offense has done nothing. Play action plenty of time for Rodgers and the pass is behind driver. Second and ten. This is a defense that gets off the snap of the ball quick here at home. This dome has been home for the Vikings since 82. They're 17 and 3 at home the last three years, 155 and 80 overall. And with this noise, that defense gets a jump. Second and 10. Brandon Jackson. Not much third and long coming up as Jackson gets one Everson Griffin the rookie on the stop and we look ahead to Thanksgiving Day as all of us should across this country and specifically here at Fox our pregame show starts at four Eastern one Pacific Troy Pam and I and our crew will be in Arlington for the Saints in the revived Dallas Cowboys yeah earlier in the year the Saints boy they were kind of sleepwalking and uh, they they put it together I mean right now not a lot of people still talking about them but at six and three they're right in the middle of the NFC race third down and nine a big hit on Aaron Rodgers and a pass is caught Greg Jennings gets away from Chris Cook and sets up a first down at the Green Bay 30. That's great concentration there by Greg Jennings at the top of this route. Chris Cook in coverage in a ball that was perfectly thrown, but he's able to regain possession. But on the back end of it, Aaron Rodgers hangs tough because you've got the rookie going in against Chad Clifton. He put a spin move there on Chad Clifton, and Aaron Rodgers had to force that one out in a hurry. Previous 14 plays for Green Bay 15 total yards that one good for 47 and Everson Griffin was a step too late. Rogers steps up and slings it incomplete for Brett Swain. Everson Griffin he did his Dwight Freeney impersonation on this one you're going to see him come off the ball on the right side of your screen the spin move there that got him inside of Chad Clifton Chad Clifton hasn't seen a whole lot of film on this guy he's expecting Jared Allen but a good move and Jared Allen on that last play this defensive front was challenged this week and in my opinion going back and really studying them they they had not played well forget the ball getting out quick forget double teams that wasn't the case they just weren't playing well. They're playing good here this afternoon. Aaron Rodgers has been hit five times already. Second and ten. Extra men on the rush. Inside handoff. Brandon Jackson a good gain on second and ten of seven. Madiu Williams the safety on the stop. And a third and three coming up. This for Green Bay. Sorry Troy starts the beginning of a tough stretch in their schedule. But a team that is behind Chicago in the NFC North as the Bears are coming off that Thursday win over Miami. That was a nice win too. You know, at Miami, a lot of people still a little skeptical of Chicago, but a great road win for them. On third and three, pass caught and not dropped. Driver had it for a moment, lost it. Good coverage by Asher Allen Winfield was in there to help and it'll be a 42 yard try by Mason Crosby as he'll try and tie it but Donald driver on the slam that's couldn't tell if Antoine Winfield got a hand on that ball or not or if driver just simply dropped it but you know the Vikings there's no question they're anticipating slants on third and medium because we've already seen it many times and that's something that's a real staple in the Packers offense. Yeah that was Winfield all the way as Crosby who took over for Longwell in Green Bay hits 
from 42. So they got the big play, the completion to Jennings, and tie it at three. Only one turnover in the game. It was forced by Charles Woodson. Jennings on that last drive, the 47 yarder to set it up. And Crosby hit from 42, and now he pops it up again. That is Dugan on the far side of the field. And so now Brett Favre is back to the field in a 3 3 game. And we welcome you inside our broadcast booth. And you were talking about the relationship with Daryl Bevel and Brett Favre. I find it interesting that Brett Favre and Brad Childress, the head coach, really don't have much of a relationship as we've heard about this soap opera that's been going up on up here in many. Well it's pretty interesting to me too based on the success that they had a year ago and the fact that you go to Mississippi and send a plane and tell the guy you want him here and then to not have much of a relationship even Brett Favre the other day said he just simply doesn't talk to Brad Childress very often during the course of a week that came as somewhat of a surprise to me as well. Yeah they basically pass in the hallway on their post game press conferences. Otherwise Brett deals with Daryl Bevel and Brad Childress who last week had to hear about the several unnamed players who trashed him to the Chicago Sun Times prior to that game in Chicago. And you know at some point these players whether they like him or not have to go play football and, and if they don't respect the head coach or they think he's a lame duck or a guy that's not going to be here long term some guys then will lay down and you've seen that not just with the Vikings but in the situation with the Dallas Cowboys and Wade Phillips in Dallas passes behind Camarillo and it's third down. Well that whole situation Joe to me just seems very odd from the standpoint that you know Brad Childress signed a contract extension last year based on the success of that team and then ultimately they as we know went to the NFC Championship game Brad or Brett Favre certainly had a lot to do with that. And then I started wondering well, maybe Brad Childress didn't want Brett Favre back this year but in talking with a lot of people no that wasn't the case. So some of the things that Brad Childress has said here over the last several weeks has been you know, somewhat surprising to me to me at 41 years old whether he's playing well or playing poorly you're saying when you went and got him hey we're riding this guy as far as he'll take us pressure on Favre Collins was coming on a blitz Hawk was in there and on third down the incompletion fourth down for Minnesota. This is a good series right here by the Green Bay Packers. You see Nick Collins coming in Colin Jenkins as well getting the ball out of Favre's hands. And after giving up points you know to be able to come back onto the field and get off in three snaps is, is a good job by the Packers defensively. So now Cluey will punt it. End over end kind of an ugly punt takes a hop goes forward. And Jermon Williams thought about trying to get it on the hop and lets it go. And in the end it's a 47 yard punt no return Brett Favre trying to explain to one of the receivers where to go in this case it was the rookie Gerhardt tied at three today's game on Fox is sponsored by Windows 7 Brett Favre looking at the pictures his replacement Aaron Rodgers. And the numbers after 41 starts are interesting to look at. It's been a tremendous start to an NFL career as a starter for Aaron Rodgers. Here's Greg Jennings makes a spin and carries a tackler for a first down. That was Cook. And this might surprise you, maybe it won't, but after 41 starts, here's a comparison between Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers. You see the record is identical but look at the specific numbers and Brett Favre who's number one all time in touchdown passes among quarterbacks in NFL history where he compares to Aaron Rodgers who has 73 to his 57 and the interceptions far lower on Aaron Rodgers side. I think there's a lot of ways you can explain that graphic but 
you know what it means is the Packer organization and the Packer fans are very fortunate that they're going to have great quarterback play for a long long time. Rodgers is flushed to his left he can do that well and he hits Jordy Nelson for a completion along the sideline of seven yards. We talked about coming in in the last meeting how Chad Clifton basically handled Jared Allen one on one in that game he gets a little bit of help there from his left guard but Aaron Rodgers is able to get outside the pocket last week against the Bears this was a real problem Jay Cutler was able to extend some plays got some yards running the ball and then also was able to make plays down the field throwing it against his Vikings defense they want to try to contain Aaron Rodgers that's one of the few times here in this first half that they've allowed Aaron Rodgers outside the pocket. Second down and three fake a handoff hit Donald Driver. A welcome back Donald Driver who is about as consistent as they come across the NFL and a former galloping gobbler award winner on a Thanksgiving telecast here on Fox. He's good for 10 well, on the first down. And that's that's really the most important thing is the galloping gobbler. Yeah. But you know Donald Driver is really I mean a pretty incredible guy to be doing what he's doing at his age still running by people he's tough as nails. He's just a solid player 35 years old in his 12th year. Green Bay starting to get a little bit of a roll going as the pass is caught and a loss of inches by Donald Lee. We'll say he got back to the line of scrimmage so second and ten coming up and Lee that's only his fifth catch since maybe the top weapon for Green Bay Jermichael Finley went out with that knee injury at Washington October 10th. Yeah and, and so the tight end position didn't absorb you know those receptions that were lost then to Jermichael Finley what's happened is Greg Jennings has gotten those and then they've got about four receivers that are within about three receptions of each other but Jermichael Finley was more wide receiver than he was tied in. Second down and 10. Pass. He and Jones. Rodgers and Jones not on the same page. It brings up Ted Thompson, the general manager. Anytime you hear the name Ted Thompson, it's usually in reference to Brett Favre and him, quote unquote, forcing him out, however you want to say it, after the 2007 trip to the NFC Championship game. But I think you look at the other side. Ted Thompson, who has a very young roster, has put together a ton of weapons and a lot of depth for Aaron Rodgers. Well, and, and and all you can do is really look down the road three years. That's when the, that's when the proof's in the pudding, and and we've seen it with Aaron Rodgers and how he's played, and then with all these injuries, the backups, as you have said, that they've been able to overcome and still play at a high level. It's third down and ten. Pass to the sideline is caught. James Jones. What a throw from Aaron Rodgers. Well no miscommunication this time it was on the previous play when they wanted to go to James Jones you could see the frustration on Aaron Rodgers face this is that void again Chris Cook he's expecting safety help he carries him a little bit he's waiting for the safety over the top and there there's a void there that you're able to take advantage of but it takes a perfect throw and Aaron Rodgers puts it right on the money third round pick in 07 James Jones out of San Jose State thirty nine yards. And the Packers have a first and 10 at the Minnesota 11. Rodgers should have been picked right into the gut of Hussein Abdullah, who had his first two career interceptions last week at Chicago. I was going to say that would have been nice, you know, back to back games with interceptions, and you don't get them any easier than that, although one of them last week was, was awfully easy. Just a Another, you don't see that a lot either from Aaron Rodgers, but but just a, I don't know if it's Donald Driver, he's missed some time and practice or whatever it might have been, but they're fortunate that that ball wasn't intercepted. Only eight interceptions for Minnesota should be nine after that last play. We may be looking back at that missed opportunity by Abdullah. Rodgers in trouble, spins out. Throws on the run. Touchdown Green Bay. Greg Jennings. So from what should have been to what is what should have been an interception. It is a touchdown Packers.
Yeah, but watch Greg Jennings how he keeps this play alive. He recognizes here that his quarterback's in trouble. He pulls back and he gives a place for Aaron Rodgers to throw the ball. Aaron Rodgers, I talked about it, outside the pocket again, putting pressure on the defensive secondary. It is impossible for a defensive back to maintain coverage when a quarterback's running freely outside the pocket. Aaron Rodgers told us yesterday, since Finley went down, I have been focused on making Greg Jennings my number one target, and he has been that. Escapability, what a weapon for Aaron Rodgers. 10-3, Green Bay. Every play on that scoring drive, a pass play. Eight of them covering 80 yards. And there's Aaron Rodgers, six of eight, and the touchdown to Jennings. A little different from that Wisconsin game yesterday where they only had one pass attempt in the entire yeah. second half. <laughs> yeah, in this case, it's uh, Aaron Rodgers showing off his weapons on the outside after losing a big one on the inside and Jermichael Finley earlier in the year. Here's a line drive kick. Harvin shows good hands, trying to keep it away from him. Instead, they just cover it well. And Harvin's out to the 22. Back to the touchdown. Yeah, go back and take a look at this, and you're going to see Greg Jennings right here, and look how he keeps the play alive for Aaron Rodgers once he gets outside the pocket. This is stuff that you just can't coach. This wasn't drawn up during the week. This is just two guys making a play. Somewhere today, there's a flag football game going on out in the street. And when you go tell a guy, hey, go get open, that's what happens. You know, that's just two guys making a play that looks pretty good, but it's just improvisational on their part. Go to the smart car and spin around. That's out there. It. Here's a handoff to Adrian Peterson, and now the Vikings trail by seven. There's a new way to play fantasy football, make real-time substitutions in a 20-minute, fast-paced game. New games start every 15 minutes, so get in on the fun. Play now. Foxsports.com slash live. Second down and eight. And the pass caught. There he is, Sidney Rice. Welcome back. 17 yards, and I think it's to Rice's credit. Troy a free agent to be that he worked his way off that hip surgery even with his team three and six on fumes he didn't lay down he wanted in the lineup but he makes a catch for 17. He may be getting that shoulder checked after that dart that Favre just put on. <laughs> Here is Adrian Peterson to his right. Vikings trying to get it rolling. Forward progress it depends on the spot. Looked like he had enough for a first down. But they lay it down and they say first down Minnesota a gain of 10. And how about Adrian Peterson Joe we had a chance to visit with him on Friday and he's one guy who's kind of stayed above the fray here in Minneapolis uh, with all that has happened within this organization. I mean all this guy wants to do is run the ball you know and and he's awfully good at it about the only two things he doesn't do well is one hang on to the ball although he's done a better job of that this year and then he's. Apparently, a guy who likes to drive awfully fast. Yeah. He got his third speeding ticket this week. Play clock winding down. Here is Speedy. And Adrian Peterson spins for 11. Adrian Peterson, who was the first round pick out of Oklahoma in 07, is on the list with the fewest games to 5,000 rushing yards. They're the greats Eric Dickerson, Earl Campbell, Jim Brown. Davis Lewis Peterson and for Adrian it took him 51 games when from the day he came into the league I think some people were wondering if he would even still be able to get onto the field I mean for as physical as he is to still be pounding people each and every week here he is he gets hit in the backfield by Pickett and then Clay Matthews drags him down. Zombo was in there with pressure on that run as well and a loss of three but Clay Matthews did not miss when he had a chance to bring down Peterson. No, he just stayed home you know and that was his assignment he couldn't allow Peterson to break contain and so he slow played it a little bit there with Jim Kleinsaucer and then once Peterson came in his direction he was able to get him to the ground let me tell you that's that's not easy to do.
We have two minutes left. It'll be second down and long for the Vikings when we come back as they trail by seven. Packers came alive in the second quarter and they now have a seven point lead 10 3 two minutes left second and 14 for the Vikings. The ball is just inside the Green Bay 41. Harvin shifts into the backfield and they hand it to him. They had that punch set out to the left and Percy Harvin. He wanted that first down and he gets it at the Green Bay 25. Uh, you see Minnesota they start in an empty set they motion Percy Harvin then to the backfield and Dom Capers talked about it yesterday he said that creates a little bit of a problem because you're initially treating him as a receiver he spread out now he comes to the backfield where he's either going to run around or he's going to get the ball like he did there. That was a big first down pickup by Percy Harvin. Yes, 16 yards and a first down. Quick set up and throw picked off by Tremont Williams. Another Favre interception. Williams read it the entire way and another Minnesota turnover with a flag down at the end of the play after the interception. It'll be number 17 on the year for Favre who threw only seven all of 2009. Well Tremont Williams is anticipating slant he jumps inside and then drives on the ball and the reason he was able to get to it is Favre it was looks like he's going to throw the flat and then he's late coming to the slant and he's got such great arm strength that he gets away with that a lot but you've got to see the relationship with the corner the low block offense number 85. That 15 yard penalty will be added to the end of the run. First down Green Bay. Then on top of it. An illegal block by Camarillo right here. The left knee it looked like of A.J. Hawk. And it ends 15 yards. It adds 15 yards to the end of the play. Here's the second Minnesota turnover. Watch Tremon Williams here. He jumps to the inside. And he's anticipating slant. And then he gets it. And so he immediately then clues Brett Favre in the in the backfield to see if he's going to turn the ball loose and as soon as he turns right there and cuts it loose you've got Tremont Williams who's driving on it looked like Brett was trying to bait him a little bit thinking that if he could hold him to the flat he was looking out the corner of his eye but just an excellent play and technique by Tremont Williams for Williams his fourth pick of the year Rodgers has to step up and run and now slides into Viking territory a gain of five. Coming up, Visa Halftime Report, Kurt Terry, Howie Michael, and Jimmy. Scores and highlights. Fox Sports ticker will have all the latest stats. And here's a stat for you. Minnesota now minus 13 in the turnover ratio. And just when you think the Vikings are in a position to do something about the seven-point deficit, the interception by Favre, now a completion to Corliss for 14 yards. And Green Bay with all three of their timeouts will use one here for the first down inside the 35 of the Vikings. And so you look at a three and six team in Minnesota trying to avoid I guess uh, a Viking funeral here today and, and it's another key turnover by Brett Favre. Yeah, and, and you said it the, the minus 13 turnover ratio or whatever it is that in and of itself tells you why this team is where they are. Conversely if you look at Green Bay and the things that they've done protecting the ball especially here over the last few weeks and then with the takeaways their defense is creating you know that's a pretty telling statistic. Looks like there's a, some more fireworks there on the Viking sideline. That tape will be dissected like the Zapruder film. It's Bevel getting into it with Brett Favre who has his hands out like leave me alone. Here is Brandon Jackson shakes two tackles and goes forward for seven Chris Cook on the stop. You know I could tell you you know it's hard to know what exactly is being said but I can tell you that as a quarterback when you've thrown an interception and you come over to the sideline 
you don't ever really want to have anybody come over and tell you what exactly happened because you know especially for a guy who's playing in his 20th year and I don't know what occurred. You know we've seen it in the past where maybe Brad Childers has suggested that he make a move and I do know that if the turnovers continue that Brad Childers told us a couple of weeks ago that it would not be a hard decision to put Favre on the bench and you know we know that he hasn't missed a start. I'm not real sure he's ever been pulled from a game based on performance. You think back last year that Carolina game there was some of that going on. Here is Rodgers throwing to a wide open James Jones for a first down. And you know if the turnovers continue heck if if it continues now with 17 seconds left here in the half if the Minnesota Vikings lose here today they're three and seven. They've got all this stuff going on with the head coach and Brad Childress you've got Brett Favre who was coerced into coming back. They added money to his deal and then this thing's falling apart. Well, that look right there is just worth a thousand words but I, I will tell you this that if they're going to climb out of this and win today Brett Favre gives them the, the best chance not Tavares Jackson and I don't care how many interceptions he's thrown on first down Rodgers comes underneath Brandon Jackson out of bounds at the one knocked out by Cook and here with nine seconds left and one timeout remaining. Green Bay is a yard away from another touchdown. And what do you got? You got Aaron Rodgers outside the pocket again, buying himself some time. Brandon Jackson, of course, he stepped in for Ryan Grant. I think he's a much better player than he's probably gotten credit for. I think he's a pretty good runner. He's got good quickness. It's gotten better as he's gotten more playing time. But the last time these two teams met, over 100 yards combined between rushing and receiving. They marked him out at the three. Replay looked like he was out at the two, and it's first and goal. 15 yards by Brandon Jackson. Quick throw. End zone. Jones. Touchdown. What a catch. With five seconds left in the half. And that's what Green Bay has done all year get turnovers and turn them into points. You can't defense this, Joe. I mean, you've got a great throw. You've got a step on the rookie, Chris Cook. That was close. Let's see where he really. Yeah, I think he tapped him down. I was, you know, they're going to check it out, but it looked to me like he double tapped right there before he went out of bounds with both feet. The previous play is under review. We were buzzed by the booth prior to the coach throwing a challenge left. Here it is. It's a booth review. One, two. We'll get the call when we come back. As we welcome you back here to the dome it looks like the touchdown will stand it's a booth review we checked in with Mike Pereira former head of the officials for the NFL now working with us at Fox looks like there's control with the right foot down left foot comes down then out of bounds with that next step but the referee Cleet Blakeman is still under the hood Pereira says touchdown. We think touchdown but the only opinion that matters is Blakeman and we'll get the call here in a second. And how great is it for Green Bay especially for Aaron Rodgers to have the type of weapons you know that he has. I mean it's of course Donald Driver missed last week's game or two weeks ago against the Cowboys Greg Jennings Donald Driver Jordy Nelson James Jones. Here it is. After reviewing the play the ruling on the field is confirmed but player game control. And for James Jones that's his third of the year and that was a beautiful catch in the back of the end zone sure was and it's confirmed for Jones where and Rogers told us earlier in the year he'd be a number one or two type receiver on a lot of teams and he's buried under the depth they have up front with Jennings and driver here with the Packers. You know, and it's those guys it's it's that guy you know you want to have Greg Jennings you want to have Donald Driver you love having Jermichael Finley of course he's not available but it's the James Joneses and the Jordy Nelsons those guys that really put pressure on a defense because most every offense has 
a couple of guys you've got to be careful about but when you can put four guys on the field and your quarterback feels strongly about him like you would James Jones I mean that's a great matchup with him against the rookie Chris Cook in the corner of the end zone and, for the touchdown and Troy you've got a quarterback then when protection breaks down can spin out buy some time keep his eyes down the field that's why he was the top rated quarterback on third down last year it's not what it was a year ago here in 2010 but when you combine all that that's why Green Bay is so tough to stop. Yeah and they're and they're only getting better because they struggled remember coming into the season we said wow this offense is going to be explosive didn't really happen but they're pulling it together right now. It's impressive what they've done that drive started with a minute three remaining at the Green Bay 47 after the interception and the penalty on the low block by Camarillo. And here's the interception. Tremont Williams, really a strong interception, stepping in and securing that ball. Yeah, and, and as Green Bay has done all season, they take advantage then of the takeaway by the defense and they go down and get seven points of their own. Timeout was called prior to the kickoff. And by the way, the extra point by Mason Crosby. I had said earlier that Crosby took over for Ryan Longwell. Who can forget the year Dave Rayner had? In a Green Bay Packers uniform, Jeff Blum can't. In the I never have outstanding public relations director, the Packers called and said, "Uh, uh." Tell the fool in the booth that Rayner was there for a year. It wasn't one to the other. Here is another pop-up kick and a long run by Harvin, and this is going to be a 14-point game at the half. Broke free, but it stepped out of bounds. And so the Green Bay Packers take a Brett Favre interception as we are in halftime. Interception number 17 on the year. Down the field with just over a minute to go to make it a 14 point game. 17 3 at the half. We'll take a break here in the dome. There's the score at the half, 17 to three, Green Bay on top. Nothing can stop us right here. One play at a time, right here together. Let's go. Stick together. Together, you gotta meet it now. 53 men, we cannot be broke. Together on three. One, two, three. Get up. On the top. Who that? 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 One, two, three. Get up. Let's eat. Let's eat. That's on Thursday, Thanksgiving Day. We will be with you from Arlington, Texas. 17-3 here in the Dome. During the half, the great John Randall, who was a defensive tackle here for the Vikings, 1990 through 2000, getting his Hall of Fame ring. Before the start of the second half, for as great as he was chasing down ball carriers, quarterbacks, he could also talk a good game. You can follow your favorite team all season long. Go to iTunes.com slash NFL. He could too. He, he was one of the all time great talkers on the field. And if I remember correctly, his Hall of Fame speech might have been one of the shortest ever, which was a bit of a surprise, although everyone else was very thankful. Longwell will kick it away. And here is Shields with more of a chance to return a kick. Been popping it up previously, and Shields crosses the 25, a return of 22 yards. Here's Pam. Joe, Mike McCarthy very succinct about his wish list for the second half. He said 100% ball security, and definitely we have to keep them stuck on three. As for Brad Childress, well, he was very succinct as well. I asked him, what do you stress? He said, take care of the ball. We can't keep giving those away. Anthony Herrera, meantime, is out with a knee injury. So no Anthony Herrera Cook has taken over at right guard but the bigger story is far of the interception the two more turnovers and a 14 point Green Bay lead trying to get to seven and three we'll stay tied atop the NFC North with Chicago play is made by Pat Williams as he wrestles Jackson to the ground again of two here are the turnovers. One by Gerhardt when it looked like the Vikings were starting to get on a roll three nothing game at that point and then the interception by Tremont Williams who stepped in front of Percy Harvin and whether it was something said by Childress or something said by somebody else or even Bevel 
Farce hot on the sideline after that interception by Tremont Williams. Second and eight. Pump fake passes low and incomplete for Greg Jennings. So Herrera is out with the knee injury. But for the Vikings, Troy, this is a spot where down by 14 points, third and eight at home, three and six record. Green Bay coming off that late first half touchdown. You got to make a play. Yeah, this is it. And it's going to be this way throughout the rest of the year if they survive this game, but they've got to get through this one first. But there's no doubt there was urgency all week. There has been for several weeks. And now they've got a half a football to correct it. Extra men on the rush. Rogers steps up, going to try and run for it. He's got it easily. Tackle made by Asher Allen after a 15 yard run. Well, the Vikings, they tried getting pressure on Aaron Rodgers by bringing the blitz. Chad Clifton doing a good job on Jared Allen, but once Aaron Rodgers breaks contain, there's nobody then to pick up Aaron Rodgers. You see, all the defenders are running with the receiver. And so nobody's accounting for the quarterback, and that's why there was so much field there for Aaron Rodgers. Takes some of the crowd out of this game. Aaron Rodgers saying he gets his vocal cords tested, trying to get through a game here in the dome, playing the Vikings. A lot quieter now as they play action. Rodgers toward the sideline, passes caught by Jordy Nelson. Greenway with a shove out of bounds, a gain of eight. You know, one of the things looking at what happened there in that first half was the Packers really didn't run the ball all that much. And part of it was they weren't having a great deal of success doing it. So they relied on Aaron Rodgers and him throwing the football. And, you know, I would think that Mike McCarthy would, would want to run the ball a little bit more, shorten this second half, not throw it as much, because as he said, I think he feels good enough about what they're doing defensively and even offensively that if they don't turn the ball over, that they should be able to win this game. Second and two, a toss to Jackson. And Brandon trying to spin for the first down. It depends on where they put it. It's a right spot, and that's a first down for Green Bay. We haven't really talked much about Mike McCarthy. Of course, he's the play caller for the Green Bay Packers and has been since he was named head coach, coming over from San Francisco where he held offensive coordinator duties. And you know, I asked him a few weeks ago if he has ever considered not calling the plays. Obviously, it's very time consuming to do both, and he said he never has. It's something that he really enjoys and and he's good at it. And he has been awfully good with it while he's been here with the Packers. They fake it to Dimitri Nance and the pass is caught by Jennings. Greg Jennings room to run and into the end zone for the touchdown. 46 yards. Asher Allen was spun around and Greg Jennings took care of the rest. You know you get one on one like that and you give a cushion as you would expect to Greg Jennings then you've got to be able to make the tackle it was just a good route there by Greg Jennings in order to get Allen running and then come out of the break but the important part at that point is making the tackle and once he didn't it was in the end zone for the touchdown Aaron Rodgers now three touchdown passes no interceptions. And it's been 24 straight Green Bay Packers points. How about Greg Jennings? Two on the day. No doubt he is the number one target for the Green Bay Packers. Smiles on the sideline, 24 3 pack. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at Southwest.com. By Visa, more people go with Visa. By Autotrader.com, now compare new and used cars side by side at Autotrader.com. And by Bud Light, it's the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. Along with our producer, Richie Zions, our director, Rich Russo. Welcome you back to what's now a 21 point Green Bay lead. There's the drive. Packers had eight yards in the first quarter. They have 266 over the last 18 minutes of game time. And now Brett Favre 
facing this good Green Bay defense is down by 21. Percy Harvin from the five. Boy, he's tough. He just does not go down. Gets out to the 30. And a hard return of 25 yards. We'll go back to the touchdown to Jennings. Hey, first of all, look at the protection that Aaron Rodgers gets. That's pretty good stuff right there. Josh Sitton's helmet comes off. Of course, the man coverage on the outside gets Medeo Williams turned around in the back end. And then here's here's what happens with losing teams. And you have the confrontation with Ray Edwards and the rookie Chris Cook over on the sidelines. And you know, you don't see those types of things happen when you've got a team that's winning. And that's why I think it was important for Green Bay, or really important for any team when you're playing against a team that's got the record and the dysfunction that Minnesota has had this year to not give them a reason and it seemed that when far through the interception to Tremont Williams you know that was kind of the final nail that said to Minnesota well here we go again. Talk about an uphill climb this is it in this game for the season. Sidney Rice with good coverage from the rookie Shields. Second and ten. You heard Jimmy Johnson say at the half that we could be witnessing history here today. You wonder where the Vikings go after this game if they lose. Brett Favre, who's making his 295th consecutive regular season start, do they turn to Tavares Jackson? Do they eventually work the rookie Joe Webb in? Do they go away from Brett Favre? And what does Brett Favre do? Who's in his 20th year at the age of 41, battered and bruised with a three and six team on their way to three and seven unless something dramatically changes. Peterson for two. Well, I would just tell you, Joe, if the Vikings thought that Tavares Jackson was the answer in future years, they wouldn't have then gone after Brett Favre and allowed him to miss all of training camp again this year. They would be playing it. And it was obvious that they didn't have enough confidence in Tavares Jackson that that's why they went at the 11th hour to bring Favre back. That's why his three teammates made the trip. And so for anyone to say put Tavares Jackson in see what see what you've got. In my opinion the Vikings they know what they've got. They basically indicated that by the way that they've done things. Third and eight here's Rice with a catch for a first down. And a big completion on third and eight of 19 yards to Sidney Rice. Boy, they needed that because it was getting ready to get real ugly around here. And, you know, Favre keeps the play alive and then hits Sidney Rice. And, you know, you just kind of think back to, you know, would things have been any different had Sidney Rice have been playing from day one? I, I don't know that they would have, but there's no doubt that. The receiving position without Sidney Rice and some of the other players they've had to bring in, and it definitely put them behind coming into the year. Blitz, Favre throws, finds Peterson. Adrian, room to run, has a blocker in front of him, and won't go down easily. Adrian Peterson, good for 16 yards. Bishop downfield to make the stop. Fox tonight. Brian writes a controversial bestseller. When sudden fame goes to his head, his big shot behavior could land him in the doghouse. On live TV with Bill Maher, Family Guy. Viewer discretion advised. An all-new episode, 9 Eastern, 8 Central, tonight on Fox. First down, Minnesota. First possession, second half. Peterson. That'll be a hold. Load hold had a hold of Clay Matthews and flags flew. Holding offense number 71 the 10 yard penalty repeat first down. Hey, Clay Matthews he's trying to get to the outside to contain and you know there's the hold and look like Matthews is Headgear might have gotten underneath the shoulder pads there of Phil Lodehold, who's who's six eight. He swallowed Clay Matthews up. Clay Matthews, who we talked to, said, you know, he's still got a walk-on's mentality. He's always looking over his shoulder for somebody to take his job. He was a walk-on at USC. He's a third-generation NFLer. His uncle Bruce was a tremendous offensive lineman in the 
Houston Tennessee organization. Clay has four tackles and a sack today and Peterson goes straight ahead for three. Let's go for a game break. Here's Kirk. Here's one you don't see every day. Dallas receiving the punt. Detroit tries to down it but no one ever touches it. Brian McCann scoops it up for the Cowboys and takes it 97 yards untouched. Remember he had a 101 yard interception return last week. It is now 14 12 Dallas scoring on a punt return in a very strange way. Joe Troy Pan. Yeah how about this little one week stretch. I I hope his, yeah I hope his agent puts some incentives in his contract. <laughs> You're always thinking money. <laughs> Second and 17. Far with a good pocket. Slings it. Almost picked after it went through the hands of Percy Harvin. Sam Shields was laying on the turf. And it almost went right into his hands. <laughs> he fell down and he was laying on the ground and he saw the ball coming. You're going to see him go to the ground right here. And as he's on the ground, the ball's in the air and he's hoping that he could get it off of the deflection. Looked like he was trying to throw it in there to Percy Harvin. Sure enough, off the deflection and Sam Shields, Sam Shields almost gets another one. The guy who didn't play corner till his last year at Miami was a receiver prior to that. One interception in his rookie year, but he was a college free agent. He's been an important part of the secondary for Green Bay, and it'll be delay a game. Delay a game. Offense. It's five yard penalty. Still third down. And this crowd lets him have it. You know at one time it was first and ten from the eh, close to the 30 yard line and I thought at that time that they would look at this as four down territory based on the score and. Now. Now I'm not so sure what they do. Well you have to get a chunk here if you're thinking that way. It's third and twenty two but. I'm with you I think that's definitely. Out there for Minnesota if they get something done here. Lewis back to the original line of scrimmage and it'll be fourth down more than 10 and while the punt unit came on the field they stopped for a moment and now Cluey will come on and the Vikings will punt it. Now the fans aren't too happy you understand with with fourth and 11. Well they're going to put Longwell in the game and try a long field goal this for Ryan Longwell will be his long by 10 yards this season. He has a long of 41. This is 51 yard try. Does he have the leg? 20. And by 10 yards, Longwell has his long of the season. He's two for two. And now flag comes down on the field right near the line of scrimmage. The officiating crew is checking to see if the field goal was good and let's get the call. Holding offense wow. number 40. It's a 10 yard penalty. Replay fourth down. That's the 12 year pro Klein saucer and now. Forget the field goal. The punt team will come on. Well, there's big Jimmy Klein saucer and you, you see it he gets his arm out but. It looked like Bush might have just been going to the ground more so than it was a hole. And it was a pretty good acting job by Jared Bush. So instead of a 51 yard field goal and a season long, that's off the board, and Cluey will punt it with Tremont Williams waiting deep. Longwell had plenty of leg on that 51 yarder, but it's erased. Seven and a half, seven minutes, 50 seconds left in this third quarter. And Cluey will angle it toward the front right corner of the end zone. And there will be a return by Tremont Williams. Gets Green Bay a little breathing room after a 39 yard punt. Leffler on the tackle, a return of 12 yards. 24 3 pack, and they have the ball. been literally all Green Bay since the end of the first quarter. It's 24 3. Packers started their own 16. 
That's Jennings. He's got two touchdowns, and now he has a completion good for eight. Asher Allen on the tackle for Minnesota. And it looks like now Aaron Rodgers, this offense, they're having fun out there as you look at their last four possessions, and that's why they're having fun. They're scoring points. And number 85, Greg Jennings, who had a three game stretch that started at the end of September, went into early October, where he had a total of six catches. He is now the man once again for. Aaron Rodgers, second and two. Play action, Brandon Jackson, first down, Green Bay, out to the 29. You know, but how about Aaron Rodgers, Joe? I mean, just the, the maturation that, that he's gone through since he became the starter, and even really in the last year or so, you know, the start of last year and the, and the sacks that he absorbed and hanging on to the ball and things of that nature. and. You know, he doesn't do that anymore. I mean, he's got such a command of this offense and where to go with the football. It helps that you've got great weapons. And, you know, they've done a nice job of giving him protection up front. But, you know, Aaron Rodgers right now is as good as any quarterback in football. And there's no reason to think that that won't continue for the next 10 years. Well, he really hit the ground running even in his rookie year. I know he's gotten better. And I say rookie, his first year as a starter. That's Nance for 11 as Green Bay just. Completely takes charge of this game. Aaron Rodgers has had back to back 4,000 yard seasons throwing the ball as a starter with the Green Bay Packers. He's in his sixth year overall, but he studied behind Brett Favre. Last year he threw 30 touchdowns, only seven picks. This year, 18 touchdowns, nine interceptions. And there are his career numbers. It was kind of that 07 game when he came in off the bench for Brett Favre against the Cowboys on a Thursday night that he points to that really kind of let him know that, it, that yeah I can play in this league. Here's Nance again and he is brought down behind the line of scrimmage by Jimmy Kennedy. I mean unfortunately when you're, when you're backing up Brett Favre you just don't get a chance to do it other than on the practice field. I mean all these other quarterbacks that are backups unless you're in Indianapolis or New York Giants. You know, generally you come in off the bench at some point during the year and get some time to play, but that wasn't the case for Aaron Rodgers. But I go back to it; it's a little bit like it. it's exactly like Joe Montana and Steve Young in San Francisco, now in Green Bay to have. I'm not saying Aaron Rodgers is a Hall of Fame quarterback yet, but to have that kind of play for what could be 25 years is really remarkable. Play action from Rodgers, who has time. Brandon Jackson has room to run. And the pass rush that we talked about first down Green Bay the pass rush for the Vikings forget it they, they, it's it's over right now they're not getting any pressure on Aaron Rodgers whatsoever. No and that's kind of been the case all season long. I know they had six sacks two weeks ago against Arizona but you can just see Aaron Rodgers moving around not any free bodies getting rushes on him and. You know this defense as we know is all predicated on getting pressure with the front four and they have not played well. I know Favre is the guy everybody points to with the turnovers. That defensive front has played as poorly as Favre has a quarterback. Here's Jackson now they get pressure Kennedy was the first one through. And finally this defense makes a play a loss of five. Second and 15 coming up. You know you think back to the. NFC Championship game last season. There's Leslie Frazier, defensive coordinator. And this was a Minnesota team that in that championship game outgained New Orleans 475 yards to 257, but they had two fumbles in the red zone. And then that interception thrown by Favre at the end of regulation, they were that close to the Super Bowl. And here they are looking at three and seven, unless something really changes. Brandon Jackson right side nothing there. And what was it Childress told us a few weeks ago in talking with him that it was it was May before he was over the funk of having lost that championship game and you can only imagine what kind of funk he's in now. Childress probably thinking you know you look at the body of work the last two years coming in this Vikings team had more wins than any team in the NFC but it has completely unraveled here in 2010 third and 14 
Blitz coming over the middle. Greg Jennings and the play is made. A hold by this Minnesota defense as Greenway made the stop. It's fourth down. Yeah, and Chad Greenway is one of the few guys on this team who has shown up each and every week. You put on the tape of virtually any game, and this guy is making plays. He's flying all over the field, sideline to sideline. I mean, he has been a true pro all season long, but really throughout his career. Got off to a tough start, had a major knee injury his first season, but I think he's one of the most underappreciated linebackers in the NFL. And he'll cash in. He's a free agent to be. Fair catch by Camarillo at the 10. A big hill to climb for the Vikings. Down 21 with under two to play in the third. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Verizon, the official wireless service provider of the NFL. Well, the Vikings are going to start at their nine. That's where they mark Camarillo with a fair catch down by 21 a minute 58 left in the third quarter play action from far that fooled everybody and the pass complete to Sidney Rice out to the 29 yeah, Sam Shields just turned him loose I think he was anticipating the ball being run away from him you know, off of this play action here and so when Sidney Rice went back out towards the sideline. Sam, you see Sam there. He just turns him loose. That could have been a bigger play than what it was. 20 yards as it turned out to be, and now it's a first down at the 29-yard line for the Vikings. They need something to happen on this drive. And this one picked off by Hawk. It's incomplete. That ball hit the ground. I believe the umpire is the one that came flying in to overrule the call. <laughs> Look at Favre. As that went off the hand of Sidney Rice and Favre thinking, come on. Well, he's thinking I, I throw another slant and I almost had another interception. That was a good call there. Obviously hit the ground. And <laughs> I think I'd quit, I'd quit throwing the slants if I was Favre. So second and ten. Kurt Menefee has a game break all loaded and ready for you. Of course, if I was far, I wouldn't be playing, right? No. 20 years. We found the Holy Grail up here in the booth. Blitz coming from Woodson, and Peterson trying to spin. Can't haul it in. Third down and 10. Here's Kurt. The Cowboys scored two touchdowns in two and a half minutes to the 21-12 lead. But back come the Lions. Sean Hill, Calvin Johnson. Touchdown, Detroit. It's now a 21-19 lead. Detroit within two points. With plenty of time left. Joe, Troy, Ted. Joe, I don't know what Dallas has, but Detroit, I don't know even what their record is right now. One or two wins, but they are they have played a lot of good games this year. I think they're right on the verge. I do too. They're two and seven. Favre on third and ten throws high. Too much for Camarillo. And it didn't happen on that drive. Well, they had a chance at him, too. Favre had a good look at it. He's got an open receiver in Camarillo. And, you know, when he loads up and decides to bring the fastball, sometimes that thing can get away from him. And you talk about Tavares Jackson, who, when you speak to the coaches of the Vikings, they'll say, smart guy, strong. He's got a big arm. But they wonder about the accuracy. and. Who knows if he's going to get his shot. It may come sooner rather than later here in 2010. Ball is downed after a 38 yard punt by Cluey. Vikings have it. They are in control up by 21. Green Bay Packers lead 20. Rodgers is having a big day. Brett Favre actually comes in on the year with a quarterback rating 31st. In the NFL at 72, it'll go down from what's happening here today. Vikings are down by 21. Under a minute to go in the third quarter. It's a rookie Crabtree in motion, handoff to Brandon Jackson. Four yard run. 
You, know, you mentioned the quarterback rating and there's a lot of people out there saying yeah what is the quarterback rating what does it really mean and a lot of people kind of scoff at it and I, I never have I, I think that the quarterback rating is a pretty good barometer as to how quarterbacks are performing and it's not based then on just how many yards you're throwing for so it, it for the most part puts quarterbacks on a level playing field to where you can compare how someone is performing are there flaws within it absolutely but. When you're down where Favre is on the quarterback rating, you're not playing well, and we know that he has. Hand off to Brandon Jackson. He slips and loses a yard, and we are through three quarters. It's a 21-point game. Green Bay on top. To the fourth we go. Back after this from your local Fox station. Twenty-four-three as we start the fourth quarter. It's a third down for Green Bay. Third down and seven. Jared Allen at defensive end on the right side. Closest to the bottom of the screen, working on Clifton. And it's from the other side, Ray Edwards. A sack for Minnesota. And what they needed at the start of this fourth quarter, a loss of eight, it's fourth down. Yeah, Edwards comes from Aaron Rodgers' front side. Blaga is right there trying to make the block on him. And I thought overall there was decent protection there. Aaron Rodgers just really had nowhere to go with the football. And about the time he was thinking of trying to get out of the pocket, Edward was there to make the sack. For Ray, that's his second of the day, five and a half on the year. And it forces a punt from Maste with Camarillo, who is sure handed, not as dynamic a punt returner as you'll see across the league. See where this bounces, not a very deep punt, and on a hop, Camarillo takes it and lunges to the 35. We'll take a break, six yard return after a 43 yard punt. Here come the Vikings down by 21. The year was 1992, and Brett Favre made his first NFL start against Pittsburgh. Same year, Percy Harvin, who is his most consistent, dependable target, is four years old. And here is Far making his 295th consecutive regular season dart. Since that day against the Steelers, down by 21. 14 to play. And Far overthrows everybody. Looking for Sidney Rice, and this is a frustrated offense. Frustrated quarterback, frustrated backup, frustrated coordinator, and an embattled head coach. Yeah, but it's not a lot unlike it was a couple of weeks ago against the Arizona Cardinals right here at this same field. You know, I mean, it was less time than what there is now. They were down 14 points with five minutes to play. Looked like that game was all but over, and yet they found a way to come back. So, I mean, as, as a <laughs> look. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm reaching right here, but there's a chance if they can pull something together and get a score, I wouldn't necessarily count them out with 14 minutes left in the fourth. Out of the shotgun, Woodson was coming on a blitz and a throw across the field to Camarillo. Good for eight. Camarillo came into this game with 11 receptions. You remember the pickup that the Vikings make getting Randy Moss at the beginning of October. Player that Brett Favre always wanted to play with gave up a third round pick for Moss and cut him loose about a month later. And if Kenny Britt's not hurt with Tennessee, Moss goes unclaimed around the NFL for a guy that the Vikings gave up a third round pick for and it didn't work. Passes behind on third down Adrian Peterson. So if you want to talk about accuracy with Tavares Jackson, Brett Favre has been inaccurate here today. Yeah, and this uh, the game is going to be all but over if they don't convert here. And, and Ben Lever started to run out onto the field for the punt team, and Brad Childress quickly called him back. And there was not a decision to be made. And I, I agree with that. That at this point you've got to one. I would say if you convert this here on fourth down, you've got to get right into the no huddle. Fourth down and two. Favre 
Trying to make something happen. Throws too high. Had Gerhardt wide open. And missed Toby Gerhardt. Vikings turn it over on downs. Favre used his legs, had an open shot at Gerhardt, and missed him. We'll take a break when we come back. Packers offense on the field, up 21. Today's game is sponsored by GMC Sierra. It's the GMC holiday event. Get the job done right this season with a GMC Sierra. By Sprint, the Now Network. And by McDonald's. I'm loving it. Twenty four three Green Bay on their way to their seventh win of the season. They have a date at the end of the year at home against Chicago. See that front for the Vikings ready to pounce. There's Rodgers buying time and he slides forward. At the forty one. We look back on better times for the Vikings. Heck, you could look to last year, or you could do it then and now with a great Chuck Foreman, who we had a chance to run into at practice on Friday. And Chuck Foreman was a five time Pro Bowler, multi purpose back, and really one of the first guys to be just that for Bud Grant. Jerry Burns is offensive coordinator, and when you talk about a guy who could catch it, kind of an extension of the running game. Using him in the passing game, and it was something that anticipated the way Bill Walsh would use running backs in that West Coast offense with San Francisco and a guy like Roger Craig. But Foreman had a very strong, albeit shorter type career with the Minnesota Vikings, and it was really fun to get a chance to run <laughs> into him on Friday. He looks great. Oh, smile there, Chuck. You're on camera, and uh, you're right, Joe. I mean, I think a lot of people, it, you know, that didn't get a chance to really watch. Chuck Foreman play they, they forget that he was I mean he was really one of the first as far as the all purpose backs and, and a big back too you know especially for that era and he's doing very well he's got a memorabilia business and uh, had a chance to visit with him the other day and a real gentleman when you led the NFL in receptions the entire NFL back in 1975 and paved the way for guys like Roger Craig certainly Marshall Falk the way he was used out of the backfield that's driver and driver has a first down Jerry Burns is here his offensive coordinator and he was down on the field before the game a coach here as well with the Vikings well the first Super Bowl that I remember watching was the Minnesota Vikings versus the Oakland Raiders Chuck Foreman obviously a part of that team Super Bowl 11. It was my first remembrance of sitting down and watching the unofficial holiday that we now know as the Super Bowl. On first down, here is Brandon Jackson left side and good effort. EJ Henderson made the stop. He had people with him. Let's go for a game break. Here's Kurt. Well, the Cowboys trying to hold off the Lions. John Kitna, the former Lion, hooking up with Miles Austin. Second touchdown for Austin on the day. It's now, once again, a nine-point Dallas lead in the fourth quarter. Joe, Troy, and Cam. Jason Garrett trying to start his NFL coaching career as a head coach at 2-0. Couldn't make for a heck of a game on on Thanksgiving Day Thursday afternoon. Yeah we look forward to it with the New Orleans Saints visiting Arlington Texas second and eight here for the Packers. Here's Dimitri Nance and Nance was a guy who the Falcons liked. the Packers picked him up off the practice squad and he's a yard shy of a first down. You know I mentioned Mike McCarthy a little bit earlier and being the play caller and, and uh, I, I just don't know that you know here we are at the halfway point and obviously a lot of football left to be played and there's some other worthy coaches but you know how can he not be mentioned as one of the favorites for coach of the year. I mean it has been. A great year on his part never using injuries as an excuse and just continuing to hold the players accountable to a high level of play and, and they've done that. It's third down and one. John Kuhn in a tailback. They play action and shoot for Jennings who's got his third. Aaron Rodgers has his fourth. 
Well, that's called keeping your foot on the pedal right there. Third and short. And you come back, no, you've got one on one on the outside. They like those matchups no matter who they're playing. The third and short, you know what you're going to get. Take a shot down the field, see if you just can't ice this thing if it wasn't wow. already. How about that? Just dropping it in. Not bad coverage by Asher Allen. No, it really wasn't. They, we call that the stovepipe. I just <laughs> drop it right down the stovepipe. This to make it 31 to 3. By the way, Troy, happy birthday. Well, thank you, Joe. I wanted to pick right now. I was wondering that. if you were going to do that. Aaron Rodgers, he's got four <laughs> touchdown passes in the pack, blowing out the Vikes. First career regular season, four touchdown game for Aaron Rodgers, and Greg Jennings has three. Aaron Rodgers is showing his former teacher how it's done here in Minneapolis. 31 to 3. Another pop up kick. And it's Dugan who takes it instead of handing it to Percy Harvin. Collins on the stop. When things are going wrong, they're really going wrong. That's Kevin Williams. They have three Williams, but they misspelled Kevin's last name. Wow. Today's game is sponsored by Chevrolet. Every model is backed by a 100,000 mile five year powertrain limited warranty. Brett Favre back to the field. The ball is at the 21, down by 28. For the first down, almost a horse collar. Ziggy Wilf and this organization. Ziggy is the owner and his seventh year in charge of this franchise. It's been a push to get a new stadium here for the Vikings. The Twins have one. Everybody's talking about a potential coaching change or how long is Brad Childress going to stick around. The story is really bigger than Brad Childress with the Vikings right now. As far as Sets up with a first and ten. Brought Brett Favre in last year. Vikings became ultra relevant, came so close. Here's one in the air, incomplete. Getting to the NFC Championship game a year ago. Now the Vikings are looking at a three and seven start with seven games left, including today. And, you know, there are free agents, Troy, and then there are free agents. And there is no free agent in sports like an NFL owner whose lease has expired. And that is the case here with the Vikings next year in 2011. Well, and they got to get a deal done if they're going to stay in Minnesota. There's no question about that. I mean, you look at the new stadiums that have gone up around the league, and the only way you're going to be able to compete on the field is to get a new stadium here, or they'll have to take this team elsewhere. Here's Harvin. Stays on his feet, goes down the sideline. It depends on the spot. And they're going to knock Harvin out right at the marker. Went right around Charles Woods, and Harvin's still playing. He picked up nine plus, and we'll see if it's enough for a first down. And they're going to have a measurement. So impressive in his second year, Percy Harvin out of Florida. Well, he's become their best offensive player. I mean, really, when you think about it, and without Sidney Rice being on the field this year, and you know, the challenging thing for the Vikings is with Percy Harvin when they want to put in new packages during the week and have him do different things because they definitely want the ball in his hands, they're never certain he's going to be available to even work on those things because of the problems he's had with migraines. And it's two inches for a first down on third down for Minnesota. And they're chanting fire Childress. Mm. The chant dies out before a third and in inches. And when they're talking about Brad Childress, 
Got a contract extension after a road win in Green Bay last year on the 1st of November. He is under contract through 2013. But isn't it amazing how far it has gone? I mean, playing in the championship game, basically one play away from the Super Bowl, and now his job's on the line. Adrian Peterson left side, first down and plenty more. Let's go for a game. Here's Kirk. Buffalo was down to Cincinnati 28 to 7 in the second quarter, 31 14 at halftime. But they've come all the way back. Ryan Fitzpatrick and Steve Johnson hook up for a game leading touchdown. 21 answered by the Bills is now 35 31. Buffalo, Joe Troy and Pam. There may be no more disappointing team across the NFL than Cincinnati. You got that right. The fact that there is one, we may be looking at it right here. Down by 28, Far throws, and the pass is broken up. Rice, the intended receiver, and shields the rookie with the coverage. Go to NFL.com's Game Center for Week 11 live game stats, fan discussions, in game video, and highlights. Plenty more at NFL.com slash scores. Second down and 10 for the Vikings. Blitz coming from Green Bay. This is Shenko. And Vasant is dragged to the ground by the rookie Zombo. No game. You know, we saw Green Bay there, even with a 28 point lead. Dom Capers, the defensive coordinator, is calling the blitzes and, you know, bringing pressure. And, and, and I don't blame him for doing that. And, and Dom Capers, of course, last year coming in as the defensive coordinator and the job that he did. And initially it was met with some skepticism, this 3 4 scheme. But they played awfully well. Defensive player of the year in Charles Woodson. They don't have the numbers this year or the ranking that they had a year ago, but I think that. He did he has done an even better job here in 2010 than he did last year considering the injuries and considering you don't score against him. Here's a snap at the feet of Brett Favre. A loss of four. This is a defense in Green Bay. that's lost three linebackers to IR. Here's the snap by Sullivan at the right shin of Brett Favre. They've lost Nick Barnett Brady Papinga Brad Jones. Harrell, Justin Harrell, the defensive lineman on IR. Mike Neal, a second round pick from Purdue on IR. Two safeties, Morgan Burnett and Derek Martin. And they've had injuries with the corners as well. As long as they keep the guy we just saw, 52, Clay Matthews, on the field, they got a chance. Fourth and 13. Down the middle, pass too high for Harvin. Again, a wide open receiver. The throw too high with too much on it from Brett Favre. And it has been frustration since the end of the first quarter on the Vikings sideline and on the playing field as they trail by 28. What a day for a rog. Aaron Rodgers is taken out of the game and those Packers fans who travel so well behind the bench of the Packers salute his third 300 yard passing day his first regular season four touchdown pass day of his career the 12th time in his career he's gone over 300 and the Packers fans who came here to Minneapolis they've had fun since the end of the first quarter it's a 28 point game and Dimitri Nance takes the ball from Matt Flint who was six and a half to go gets a chance to show what he can do. Well, and we talked about it coming into this game, Joe, that Minnesota had played well here at home. They had won their last three, three and one. And so forget for a moment where Minnesota was within their season. This is a nice win for the Packers. It's a nice win for Aaron Rodgers. I mean, not a place where historically the Packers have had great success. And he knew this was going to be a challenge. And to come in here and have the game that he did and really dominate this team. You know, in hindsight, you think, you know, not much of it because of Minnesota's problems. But this was a, this was a nice win for this team. Seven and three and seven and three, the top two teams in the NFC North: Chicago, Green Bay. This is Nance. 
shakes a tackle that was Griffin and then gets absolutely bent over backwards somehow gets up after a gain of two. The best teams from around Europe battle in the UEFA Champions League and you can find it on Fox Soccer this week. The Scottish champs Rangers FC take on Mexican sensation Chicharito and Manchester United live in HD and only on Fox Soccer. So Chicharito will be found on Fox Soccer. As we watch a third and five from Matt Flynn who hasn't had much of a chance to do anything. Seventh round pick out of LSU. Now he gets to throw and he completes to Nelson. And Jordy Nelson has a Green Bay first down. And they're going to let Matt Flynn throw it around a little bit too. You know, kind of rather than just getting the game and hand it off, that doesn't do much for anyone. Let Matt Flynn come in and complete some passes and you, know, you just never know when you might when you might need them. They've all gotten a little spoiled around Green Bay with not having to rely on backup quarterbacks to come in and play. But I know they like Matt Flynn and visiting with uh, Mike McCarthy and what he has shown them in the limited time that he's had in preseason games. Greg Jennings by the way has the first three touchdown day receiving six years for the Packers Javon Walker the last one to do it. Here's more from Dimitri Nance good for two. And here's the day for Aaron Rodgers at least some of it. Moving to his left throwing back across his body the first touchdown to Jennings here's one to Jones. Here's another one to Greg Jennings who made a move got to the end zone. And then on third and inches the old stovepipe. Right down the stovepipe and into the gut of Jennings. It really wasn't a great stovepipe because it was a little bit underthrown but you get the gist. You get the gist. <laughs> and you're picky. <laughs> Second down and eight. Handoff is to Nance. And he's a yard shot of first down. Thursday, Thanksgiving is Gobbler Day. Here on Fox. This ridiculous looking award that we came up with when Troy, Chris, and I took over for Pat and John years ago. We initially meant it as a joke and I don't know that the joke really has carried forward and now looks like a big brick of chocolate shaped like a turkey. We've had some proud recipients over the years though. No we have and I understand they they made a mold and there's only this is the last one <laughs> of this particular mold so this thing will look different next year. Whoever's doing the game Dimitri Nance a gain of three here are the past winners. Emmett the first one. He's the Lombardi of the gobbler Dre Bly Julius Jones who now is with New Orleans. Did you know that he's one of nine yeah. running backs the Saints have Michael Vick Romo Favre DeMarcus Ware and Donald Driver got it last year in a win at Detroit. Emmett Smith thought so much of his that he didn't even take it home with him. Ray Bly, on the other hand, came back to the locker room like a conquering hero after getting it. On first down, Flynn slides and picks up five. On Atalu on the stop for the Vikings. And we're coming up on the two minute warning. Flynn gets a chance to stretch his legs. And do his thing. Green Bay Packers will be seven and three. The Kings the opposite. Two minutes left. Minneapolis. You look at the remaining schedule. Look at the end of it. At home the day after Christmas against the Giants and then right after New Year's Day a home date against Chicago. These two teams Green Bay and the Bears will be tied at seven and three. The Bears won. The first meeting at Soldier Field, but this is a bit of a tough stretch here coming up for Green Bay. Not if they play like this. Two minutes left, second and five. Here's Nance. Kennedy on the stop, a gain of three. Next week's schedule here on Fox. These Packers will be at the Falcons. Falcons play in moments in St. Louis. 
as they lead the South Vikings Redskins Panthers Browns and then America's game of the week after Thanksgiving the Eagles at the Bears Rams at Broncos Bucks at Ravens it all starts with the Ford Fox NFL pregame show brought to you by the all new Ford F-150 built Ford tough. You know, I think one of the nice things Joe for the Packers is all their games are going to be on Sunday as opposed to Thursday night or Monday night Sunday. You know so that it allows them to at least continue to establish that routine during the week. Man's trying to fight for first down will be a yard short and while we went through all the injuries on defense for Green Bay they lost the Packers did their top running back Ryan Grant week one they lost this tremendous weapon in Jermichael Finley October 10th at Washington and yet they've found something with Brandon Jackson he's been getting better as the weeks have gone on and then on the outside using all those weapons with Aaron Rodgers in the middle. A lot good happening for Mike McCarthy. Yeah, you know, and I had a chance to visit with Mike Steekpack during the week, and, really? and yeah, and whether or not you know how he felt anyway about this game, and you know, obviously there was some concern coming in, but just a dominant performance by the Packers here this afternoon. Here's Nance losing ground on fourth and one. Brinkley, the first one there, and those who remain cheer the defensive stop. 28 seconds left. The offense is on the field and Brett Favre after a delayed start will join them. They're at Washington next at home against Buffalo a date with the Giants. A date with Chicago at Philly at Detroit. They'll be three and seven. Best they could do if they won out nine and seven. They're too far out in their division. As far as shows off his arm strength, and Camarillo makes the catch out of bounds. I, I think it's going to be. People have been waiting for an axe to fall. You look at this performance here when it's all sitting out there. Two weeks ago, they come back down by two touchdowns under five to go. They beat Arizona. They spoiled that effort by laying an egg last week at Chicago. Then at home against Green Bay, you come out and play like this. This is going to be an interesting week around the Vikings this week. Well, and I, I'll tell you what would be interesting. If I was Matthews or this Packers defensive front, I, I'd come with an all-out blitz right here. I mean, if you're going to sit back in the pocket and try to throw one down the field for a cheap touchdown when the game's over. They instead come underneath here to Gerhardt, and that'll end it. Unless Minnesota wants to use a timeout, but why? Well, I think that's what Green Bay was expecting on the last play: was that the game's over, take a knee, and call it a day. Matthews was trying to get him on that last play, but they had three defender or three blockers for him. Peterson walks out with his hand on the shoulder of Brad Childress. What a day for those two: Aaron Rodgers, Greg Jennings. We'll come back and wrap up after this. Thirty one three is the final so a twenty eight point point win and Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers come together at midfield time to share the seven word recap brought to you by Windows Live as we summarize the game in seven words Rodgers and Jennings combined to sink the Vikings I put the in that's not one of the seven for whatever you're sharing to the cloud with Windows Live to create and share anywhere we will say so long from the Twin Cities and until quarter after the hour we will take you to Washington at Tennessee good game Dick Stockton Charles Davis Jim Mora will have the call Favre hangs his head as his Vikes take it on the chin.